When we were first on the air together, after a year or so, I was at a party, a chat, cocktail party, and chatting with some people, and a woman broke through the cordon right around, and she was kind of weird, and she looked at me like one of the witches in Macbeth, and she said, you're a catalyst, and Jim's a laser. And then she pulled out of the group and disappeared. But there was quite a lot in that, actually. Um, Jim's intelligence is so laser-like, no matter what he's applying it to, that his ability to analyze any situation, whether it's how we treat a certain news story or what a news story means, or um, uh, a personnel matter, or personal affairs, it's just like that. And I am a catalyst. I'm, I'm a bringer together of people and, a, and a thing, one who makes different chemical ingredients work together. So that's one way, I think, just in terms of personalities. Um, Jim is more author authoritarian than I am. He was a permanent officer in the Marine Corps for a while. And uh, the staff will joke about him that he runs the place like, boot, like a boot camp. Um, uh, I am more collegial. But good combinations, those. Our um, backgrounds, uh, sort of geographically and in terms of upbringing, could not have been more different. I mean, the two the memoirs we each have written are, are about very different lives. But we are, um, we are 99% um, uh, in agreement on everything. Most of the conversations we had during the day weren't about the news of the program at all. They were about the books we were writing or about our families or about... We had, when our children were still minors, we had an agreement going back long before his uh, little heart attack. We had an agreement that um, we would be each other's executives and I would look after his children and he would look after my children if uh, anything happened to us. Uh, now our children have way outgrown all that now. They're all uh, old, married, and everything. But... Um, that was um, how close we were. And I think that that closeness imbued, suffused the atmosphere at the place. Um, and it was always used to resolve differences. Um, so in interviewing, I learned a lot from him because I'd sort of come out of the school, the NBC school, and to some, some extent the BBC school, of uh, an interviewer carrying on like the Secretary of State in waiting. Well, Mr. Secretary, we all know that the situation with the Russians in Laris Moldovia has been intolerable for a long time and that U.S. policy has been ever since uh, Senate Resolution 304 that we should do la la la, so what are you going to do about it? Uh, or something like that. And Jim always cuts through all that crap and says, what are you going to do about this? Or what does this mean? Or I don't understand, explain to me. And I learned a lot from um, his manner of very direct interview and not being afraid to say you don't understand or you don't know. But also his extraordinary ability to listen on the air. You know the hardest thing to do on television is listen when you're interviewing somebody? Because it's part of the culture. You're so worried about dead air. You're so worried about not having something to ask that a lot of television interviewers, you can either see them or hear them asking the next question that's written down not something that arises out of the uh, out of the thing that's on the air. He is a very good listener. He has an ability to keep balls in the air and to run a discussion of four people and never lose the thread or drop an important point. He's brilliant at that. Um, nobody does it better than uh, he does. Um, all these things I learned um, from him. Also, <clears throat> I learned a lot about the fundamental meaning of fairness. And um, I thought I was fair, and I thought I was objective, and I learned a lot from Jim about that. Hey, wait a minute. That isn't straight. That isn't fair. Um, you mean fairness in terms of... Uh, being objective and, and, being, and treating people um, equitably. Um, and so I, um, I just... Um, I mean, he, is, he really is an extraordinary guy. There was a... Um, when he did the presidential debates, not this last time, but the election before, um, there was a debate between um, uh, Bush and Clinton, and um, um, he, uh, somebody ran a cartoon the next day, and it's, people are watching their television set, and they're watching the debate, and in one box they're saying, 
I know who I'm going to vote for after watching this debate in the next box is Jim Lehrer. Well, I always told him if he ever ran, I would um, run his campaign for him. And all I wanted to be was ambassador to Paris.